up on Ottawa this week with the opioid epidemic continuing. A public information session was held at the Canterbury Recreation Centre. Oh, absolutely in a crisis. We've been in a crisis for 18 months. Now. About 30 people attended the meeting. We have full details of what was said. The Caldwell Avenue community is rallying together after recent homicides in the area. They're hoping to give their community a better name. And after seven years as Governor General, David Johnson held his last event at Rideau Hall before former astronaut Julie Payette takes his place. Ottawa This Week starts right now. Hello, I'm Charlie Sinak and thank you for joining us again for season two of Ottawa this week. It's so great to be back and well this week we are here in the Caldwell Avenue community. It's I'm sure a community that you have heard of and sadly not for anything good. Another homicide took place here just behind me in this community. The community is shook up and while so many children live here in the community and the parents are just wanting it to stop. It has been a year since I stepped foot in the Caldwell community but it hasn't been like that for Ottawa police. The area that is known for drugs, gangs and killings was the scene of yet another homicide a week ago, taking the life of 20-year-old Hamze Siran, a university student with a criminal record. Still a week after his death, a growing vigil has been erected outside of his home and neighbors are still changing the water and the flowers and lighting the candles. This is just one of many incidents that have taken place in the community over the past few years. Last October, we reported on the 14th homicide of 2016 that took place in the Caldwell community that left one man dead and started a major manhunt. The man involved was later arrested. It ended up being a family dispute. It's incidents like this that are leaving so many in the community alarmed, especially with so many children living in the community. This area is known for having multiple incidents, and as I'm sure you can tell from here behind me, this area is populated with many children. And while sadly this is also an area with high crime rates, buildings such as these ones here behind me have been involved in recent incidents of shootings and stabbings. The Caldwell community has lots of children who have sadly became used to the sight of body bags being pulled out of the townhomes and police arresting individuals in the area. Although the area is known for a lot of bad behavior, the community is rallying together in hopes of changing that. They would like to see more security cameras installed in the area and a greater police presence. On Wednesday, they held a protest and city councillor for the area, Riley Brockington, came out as well as Ottawa's police chief, Charles Bordelo. The residents are hoping to get their message across to the elected officials, so more vigils won't have to keep popping up as more lives are lost. On well, other news, with the opioid epidemic continuing all across the country, an information session was held at the Canterbury Recreation and Community Centre in the Canterbury area, and Senator Vern White was the guest speaker. Senator Vern White used his experience as Ottawa's former chief of police to help spread awareness on opioids at an information session at the Canterbury Recreation Centre on Friday. He comes at the issue not only from the law perspective, yet also on a political side. Now, Senator Vern White does not only tackle this issue as a senator in politics, yet also as Ottawa's former chief of police. He said while being Ottawa's police chief, he saw this issue firsthand. You know, being the chief in Ottawa, you actually see the impact it has on families more than anything else. I've never, I've never known, I've never met a 15-year-old girl who wanted to be a drug addict living on the streets prostituting themselves for money to buy a rock, a rock of crack cocaine, yet we have hundreds of them. White spoke to a group of about 30 concerned people who are looking to know more about opioids and how serious the issue is here in Ottawa. He says we are in a crisis and have been for about a year and a half. Would you say that we're in a crisis? Oh, absolutely in a crisis. We've been in a crisis for 18 months though. I mean, Vancouver was having two, three people a day die 18 months ago. I mean, we're in a, it's a national crisis right now. And, and going to, the scary part is it's going to be much worse before it gets any better. 
A year ago, White got a bill passed in the Senate. It proposed to add the six chemicals that are used to make fentanyl to the Controlled Drug and Substances Act. So we passed the bill a year ago and then uh, the government immediately implemented the, uh, uh, the ingredients uh, to the listing under the Narcotic Control Act so that they'd actually, or the uh, Food and Drug Act, so they'd actually have to be uh, permits required to possess any of those ingredients. Although that was done, White says it's not enough. He is hoping to see packages searched better that are arriving from countries like China. Our choke point is going to have to be, I think, on combating it from a customs perspective, and that's going to be searching uh, to a much greater level all of the packages coming from China. And companies that are caught shipping ingredients here, I think, need to be banned from shipping again to the country. I think we have to be that aggressive. And also for White, he hopes that a better education in schools would help make teens make right choices. A message echoed by the drug advocacy group, We the Parents, who was also in attendance at Friday's meeting. I think we have a good education on some issues, not on opioids, and specifically not on this issue, it's killing people. I think our, I mean, the education program we have in place is around trying to help young people make the right decisions, right? I think our challenge now is that those right decisions previously aren't enough because telling young people not to take, you know, an opioid or heroin is one thing. Now we find out that, you know, something else they were taking maybe was a half a Percocet from a friend. Now we find out that half a Percocet is also laced with uh, fentanyl. Now White would like to see all three levels of government coming together on this issue to get messages across in communities. So far, Ottawa has seen a few local politicians talking about the issue, but many are still not comfortable with it. Three Conservative candidates were in attendance, as well as a few city councillors. Among those in attendance was Tanya Spirak and Sean O'Leary of the drug advocacy group We the Parents. Their first goal was fighting to get more education in schools, and Spirak says that process is getting a little better. The group We the Parents will be starting a Smart Recovery program in the coming weeks. Smart Recovery is a self-motivated life skills program for teens or anybody who has suffered from addiction and wants the skills to move forward in their life without drugs. Recovery meetings for the youth of Canada and, and area, and hopefully we'll start expanding that the next month to Nepean and get them going around Ottawa weekly meetings for the kids, as well as uh, monthly meetings for the parents and uh, education meetings for people with younger children. And to catch up with all the latest information you need to know on We the Parents, you can visit their website at wetheparents.ca. Well, I'm currently standing here at Britannia Beach, and well, as I'm sure you could tell here behind me, they are cutting down what's left of some very old trees. This comes after a downburst took place yesterday. Now, you're probably wondering what a downburst is. It is similar to a microburst, yet it covers a larger area and is as strong as an F1 tornado. So this downburst ripped through Ottawa yesterday afternoon, causing lots of damage. Many homes have their roofs ripped off of them, and a lot of trees fell down, especially here at Britannia Beach. Even 24 hours after this took place, they are still cutting down what's left of the trees behind me, clearing up the bike paths and the pathways, such as what I'm standing on right now of this debris. And um, you can't tell from here, but over onto the other side of me, onto the other side of the camera, there is a lot of debris around the park, lots of leaves that have fallen off of trees, branches, you name it, it's here. I spoke to one woman earlier today who said that she was watching children walking home from school. They were holding on to the wooden fence, holding on to the trees because the winds were extremely high, especially here in Britannia Beach where winds got up to a high of 160 kilometers an hour. She said that she saw their binders flying all over and as I said, this was quite a devastating storm. It came out of nowhere and no one was expecting it. So what's next after this storm? Well, right now, crews are working, cleaning up the area, getting rid of these trees that fell down. Uh, trees did not just fall down here. Uh, one tree did fall down uh, just by the Chio Hospital. One woman was struck by that tree. She went into cardiac arrest. She is, I believe, in stable yet serious condition in hospital. Quite a, an interesting place to be hit by a tree, that's for sure. At least medical care was there, able to help her out. 
Uh, so that's another situation we're seeing there. Alta Vista got hit very hard by this storm as well. Trees crashed down everywhere, uh, over roads, some hit cars. Now we don't know of any other injuries on this. Uh, and in uh, just near Carlingwood, actually on Carling near Maitland, uh, a roof was blown off of a house. And that woman is, of course, very surprised that that happened. Obviously, she was not expecting it. That was a devastating situation for them. The roof blew off of the house. We've also heard of some people who were on scaffolding at the time whenever the wind uh, came. We don't know any details on it, their injuries, yet they are seem to be okay as well. So this was a serious storm, and now the cleanup is going on. Charlie Cenac, TWIN News, Ottawa. One last weekend, Saver Fall took over the grounds of Rideau Hall, and it was Governor General David Johnson's last event as Governor General. I walked around the private grounds with uh, David Johnson, as well as his wife Sharon, for their last time. Governor General David Johnson hosted his last event at Rita Hall on Saturday before former astronaut Julie Payette is sworn in as the new Governor General of Canada on October 2nd. This is pretty happy seeing these people coming and enjoy Canada in the fall and making it clear that this is the home of the people of Canada. Uh, we hope we'll have 10,000 people here today, which will be a record. Johnson walked around the grounds of Rita Hall one last time, shaking hands with vendors and taking pictures with visitors. When one woman asked for a selfie, Johnson joked, I'm not the Prime Minister. The RCMP don't like having things close to my head. The Governor General is currently making his rounds around Rideau Hall, talking to all the vendors and making sure that he has a little bit of time with each person. Johnson visited all the vendors for over an hour and tried to guess every child's age who he encountered. All the food that was at the event was provided by the Rideau Hall kitchen and included everything from St. Albert's cheese curds dusted in apple and cinnamon to sausage in a honey mustard sauce. Now visitors to Rideau Hall today got to see sections of the building they wouldn't normally see, including the private gardens. Johnson opened up parts of Rideau Hall that are normally restricted to tourists and visitors. That included the private greenhouses that offer multiple species of plants. Johnson is Canada's third longest serving Governor General and got his term extended twice. Once because of the 2015 federal election and then again to be here for Canada's 150th birthday celebrations. Although he will no longer be the Queen's representative to Canada, Johnson is not planning to fully retire. He is planning to get back into the profession of law. I'm a, um, a lawyer, a law professor by profession, so uh, I'm probably associated with a law firm or a firm that uh, is interested in the um, case of law, the reform of justice, or movement of our law. Um, I'll be interested in uh, a lot of pro bono activities and I'll do uh, some things on the international scene to advance Canada's interests. Johnson has enjoyed his seven years representing Canada, yet he is also looking forward to spending more time with his wife Sharon Johnson and their 14 grandchildren. They plan to spend time on their farm in Carleton Place around 40 kilometers away from here and continue staying physically fit which includes two and a half hour bike rides along the Greenbelt. This is definitely not the last we have seen of the Johnson family. Thank you all so much for joining us here in the Caldwell community. I'm Charlie Sinak. We'll see you back here next week.